Why people shy away from coming and getting help is because they already feel defeated. They already feel like there's no way. They already feel like, and it's like, well, what have you tried? What have you, have you done anything outside of complaining about it or outside of just talking to your circle of people who are just going to make you feel better and, you know, sugarcoat yeah. you and rub your back? Like, have you actually gone to do something? And if they're talking... Hello, and welcome to another amazing episode of TMC, where we are here to help you take your relationships from surviving to thriving. Today on TMC, we have Darius and Shardell Matthews with Growth and Intimacy in Marriage. here and now kind of therapist. So there's so many different scopes, right? When we're talking about therapy and different ways that you can approach therapy. There are different angles to therapy and therapists get to choose, right? Which angle and which which way they want to go. So I'm more of a, a here and now present type of therapist. The person who's like, I'm ready. We need to change. We need to fix this has probably long-term list of things that they're like, this is a buildup of, you know, things we got to talk about. And the person who's like, I don't even know why we're here. They're more of like the here and now they're in the present. They're irritated. They're all these things. Right. And both of those perspectives are relevant to the problem that they're having. It's how you're feeling, not wanting to be here and how they're feeling, wanting to be here and that urgency. And so I feel like unpacking both of them is where it's important, because if, let's say, two people come in and they're not on the same page about why they're there, that's something to unpack. Why are you even here? Why are you even talking to me? What do you want to get out of talking to me? Because if that doesn't start off the right way, then there is a lot, you know, that has to mm -hmm. be done. Communication is really where it starts. Just kind of being open and honest and transparent about how you feel. Oh, wow, wow. I do agree 100%. And that's awesome. Think that it's definitely necessary, if, especially when you find yourself struggling with certain situations in a relationships or dealing with past trauma. And many of us, we have things from our past situation, yeah. circumstance, our upbringing. I believe we're all working through things and getting some help. There's nothing wrong with that. And you just said something that I was like, okay, because I think that sometimes we could probably look at the person's like, uh, you know, I don't know what we're here for, whatever. I'm mm -hmm. here because they want to be here. And you think that that person doesn't want to work on it. As we continue to think about dealing with therapy and things of that nature, if you all do not mind sharing What's one of the challenges you guys have been married for two years now? What are some of the challenges that you have experienced in those two years? And what are some ways that you overcame those challenges? I would say really learning her communication style for me, for me was kind of a challenge because of the fact that I think she is a therapist. <laughs> so because of the fact that she is a therapist, she can kind of cut herself off. But it's not a it's not a bad thing, but it's just more of like a I know how to refine what I want to say. Yeah. It gives me the therapist answers. Just really just trying to figure out the way she thinks. Because I've noted again, her being a therapist, she thinks differently than your normal average day per everyday person. Yeah. So I kind of had to think like a therapist. <laughs> He became very observant. I I would say that. I think that's kind of what he wants. He's trying to say because yeah. I mean, as a therapist, we got to observe everything: body language, words, tones, all of that, right? Yeah. Um. So when I didn't use my words, he figured out how to process everything else. Um. And to me, what that did was it irritated me because as a therapist, it's like I don't need you reading me; <laughs> just let me say it. And so that kind of made it pushed me in like a weird way to have to communicate with words mm -hmm. because if I did any other thing I'm like now you're trying to read me and I don't like that <laughs> don't try to predict my statements um, because that's what therapists do therapists try to read you and kind of like read between the lines like there is no read between mm -hmm. the lines there shouldn't be let me say yeah there shouldn't be a read between the lines when it comes to communication with your partner. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I tend to do that sometimes and he'll push me to the point where I'm like, okay, I can't be doing it. So that's definitely something that I'll say he has done for me for sure. I guess mine would be, we didn't, we spent a lot of time together during COVID because mm -hmm. when we, we met to 2019. So 
we were dating that year and 2020 was supposed to be like our come out year, hanging around all our friends, doing, you know, that. Um, and then the world shut down on us. Mm-hmm. But we got to spend a lot of quality time together during that time. So life started to life when everything started to happen again and things opened up and work and all of that. Um, and so our quality time reduced a lot which kind of ran into like our intimacy and how we tried to figure out how to balance that and spend time together and incorporate that. Um, And I don't think it took us a long time to realize it was like a slow churn, right? Like it took us a long time to realize that that was affecting the relationship until it was affecting the relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And then we had to be very intentional, I think, about figuring out how to incorporate those moments where in COVID we didn't have to think about it. It was just a lot of free time. And now just being married, having different schedules, you know, having all this stuff going on, money and life and inflation and all of this stuff. Right. Um, Is like, how do we make sure that we don't sacrifice us? Mm -hmm. And that's probably been the most recurrent thing of like, it's not just the month, Like, let's just do it this month and then we'll figure it out. It's like, no, we have to consistently be doing this. And I think that's probably a struggle a lot of people have and they just don't realize it just because life is making them have to be busy or whatever the case is. Could you give the TMC listeners some advice to help to be more intentional about that quality time together and even some advice about what are some things they can do to to set that experience for that quality time? From my perspective of that, Portion. For instance, for us, whenever I have an off day, no matter if it's last minute or not, I'm trying to, but let's go on a date. Last minute. It can, it can literally be seven o'clock in the, I mean, seven o'clock in the evening. I'm like, babe, we have a, we, we won't be able to do date night this week. So let's go tonight. Actually putting forth the action to make time for that intimacy to grow. No matter what the situation is. I would say mine would be understand what you like and how you feel. Because if you don't, you don't enjoy the moments Mm -hmm. as well if let's say you're just doing something because somebody else wants to do it you're not going to enjoy it you're already coming into it with a bad mindset Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so if you can kind of really be honest and true to yourself and what you enjoy and your experiences and be able to dialogue about them then at least you can get something out of it that kind of fills your cup um, instead of not and kind of just going with the flow and then one person is getting something and you know the other person isn't so that would definitely wow. be my advice wow that's good that's good because I think that's that may be something that we don't even think about you know so we're big on like the intimacy cards the card decks and the all that stuff um and so we I mean I always say it's the little thing It doesn't have to be anything big or grand. It could be a love note. It could be a text message. It could be um, anything that just, you know, we talk about the love languages, for example. Um, And people, I think everybody should know their love language. Um, And we talked, you know, when we were dating about the fact that our love languages change. And we don't realize that they change, but they change just based on our needs. Um, And so... By understanding that, it's one of these things of like understanding where your partner is at that moment. What do they need at that moment? Like you said, you know, he might see that I'm stressed out during the day and he'll come home. He's like, we need to go out. (laughs) Right. And that's just him recognizing something in me that I don't really see. And so I feel like part of what's necessary is just having that ability to say like, hey, this is where I'm at. (laughs) Um, and be able to express that and kind of have the partnership and understanding of knowing like it's okay to be able to express how you feel about them stuff. Be patient. Hmm. Everybody's moods is different. Work could be stressing her out. And then I may be in a mood for that, but she might not be because she just doubled the client going through whatever situation she's going through or he or she is going through. But what I want to make sure our people understand about when it comes to date nights so we would just go to the park and walk. Mm-hmm. And we would just sit there as we're, wa- as we're walking, we're talking. And that's where we get all that. What well, is this how I feel? This is what's going on. This is what I want. This is where I'm at. I want to make sure I said that part too. So literally, it doesn't have to be going on. They, it can yeah. literally, I've literally come home and be like, let's go to the park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's go walk around the street, walk around the house. <laughs> so walk around the street, the neighborhood, something like yeah. that. But as far as them not getting that, what they want, yeah, just be patient and try not to be a bug. 
Yeah. 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 I know how it's been good. One of the metaphors I always use, um, I think that I'm pretty sure I learned it in school, um, has to do with Kool-Aid. So like everybody likes their own flavor of Kool-Aid. And unless you communicate, like I like red Kool-Aid, you like orange Kool-Aid, you like blue Kool-Aid, unless you communicate what you like, nobody would know the kind of Kool-Aid you need in your cup. They're just pouring Kool-Aid into your cup. And so you know, you want to say, oh, well, you saw my color or, you know, there's so many different things you can say to try to give the reason why somebody else wouldn't be filling your cup appropriately. But the only way to make sure that happens is to say, it. hey, I oh. like this Kool-Aid. Yeah. And it's their choice to say, OK, let me get the Kool-Aid that you like or not. Right. But you can't fault them for giving you the wrong Kool-Aid if you don't say it. And so it kind of goes back to that. It's like when people are struggling with stuff like that, well, what are you struggling with? Are you open or comfortable? You know, if this is like a long-term life person, you should be able to say, hey, this Kool-Aid is not working right now. Or something about this Kool-Aid is funky. Um, and we need to put some more sugar <laughs> or whatever the case <laughs> is. Um, to make sure that both of us are in agreement about it or both of us understand why something is wrong with it or whatever the case is, um, because it's not his responsibility to know and it's not my responsibility, you know, other than to tell him and communicate that it's, you know, him to fix. It's really a partnership when it comes to that. It's not a one-sided thing at all. The patient's part is trying to figure out the needs of your partner, I guess you can say. Yeah. That's how what... the process is what the growth in patience is, if that makes sense. It makes sense. I think that just for both parts, the spouse that is learning to be patient as well as the the spouse that needs to receive that grace of patience, just understanding like it's a everything is a process. And you guys have said that multiple times tonight as a relationship. This summer, Cedric and I will be married 25 years. And oh wow, congratulations. That, thank you. Thank That's you. That's awesome. And there's definitely everything is a process. It's a process yeah. of continual growth, continual mm -hmm. change, continual learning, continue to learn your spouse, especially jumping back to when we say the word intimacy. Sometimes yeah. we think that's only sexual. It does yeah, include really that, not. but it's not just that, right? Yeah. Right. So as we continue in our marriages and we learn that, then we're learning there's other parts of her that I have to figure out. There's other parts of him that I have to figure out. And then there's other parts that they will tell me. And when I say figure it out, it, I don't uh, want to give anybody an excuse not to communicate what they're feeling <laughs> right. or what they're going through. But you just said, Chardell, that he started to read you the mm -hmm. same way you read clients. And mm -hmm. I think that and I'm listening and I'm so happy that he's on here because it's like a whole different perspective to understand being married to the therapist, right? And then learning those same techniques to make them mm -hmm. work for your relationship. Like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, she's stressed out. We need to go to the park. Let's go. What lessons do you feel that you've taken away from your relationship that would be beneficial to someone else? I feel like the lesson that I've learned with being with him is literally the truth will set you free. Um, um, I, yeah. in my last relationship, I cannot say that I was honest about like myself, how I felt about certain things, my experiences. And so when I got in a relationship with him, one of the things that I promised myself was that I was going to be honest he was gonna get me a hundred percent love it or leave it you know and it was one of those things of there was even still a barrier at that point in my honesty because there was still some level of wanting to protect myself and not wanting to give too much of myself and like I mentioned earlier he came from a very honest background so for him, honesty was clarity. And so it's hard to protect myself and border and try to reserve when he's like, I need all of it yeah. or else I don't trust you. And so it was like a tug of war of do I have to be like, I, that's like I said, I need to be a hundred percent with myself. And that's kind of what I had prayed for was somebody who required that of me. And so because that is what we needed, our relationship kind of went really fast in the beginning because everything was kind of laid out on the table really quickly. But then once that happened, it laid the platform for everything else yeah, to go so yeah. smoothly. 
um, that now I kind of regret not doing that in other relationships because I feel like that would have cut a lot of loose ends very quick. Just kind of having, not having to wait so long to get to the root of everything and how you feel and how it's affecting you, um, I think really did wonders in our relationship. So now it's like anything goes. <laughs> I can talk about anything with him um, because all of the tough stuff really got discussed very quickly. The whole thing about your spouse should be your best friend. I think that's that's really what it should be because how can you be there for each other if you really don't know what's what, whatever, whatever situation it is. I think that's even amazing because it's like the, just the, the two of you looking at the same thing like you know just the fact that we were open and honest and Shardell when you said that I'm like for a relationship that's like hello when we're talking about the marital relationship to be able to be honest to be vulnerable to be open with your spouse and have that foundation set from the beginning it yeah. does remove a lot of the muck and the mark um just like I said for Cedric and I we got married very young and there mm. I would tell the truth. That was not me. That was not my case. It, it was like thoughts and feelings. And they yeah. like, I'm I'm not about to say that. I'm not discussing that. But now here we are almost 25 years later. I know that this is of the other most importance. So when yeah. I'm feeling some way, even if it's, you know, it ain't going to be right right now. I'm going to have to like, we have to talk about this. Mm -hmm. I have to be honest mm -hmm. about this. I have to say how I feel. And I think that that is important because they know, just like Derry said, they know what they're dealing with. They know what's yeah. what. You are you are allowing them, allowing your spouse to make a decision, support you, to make a choice, to assist you from a place of pure honesty and clarity. They yeah. is nothing catching them by surprise because they right. know that's right. that's definitely some great lessons to learn this oh, year. You have to say yes every day. The moment you say I do, you made that commitment to say yes every day, no matter what the mm. situation is. So that is basically what I'm saying. So keep us yeah. <laughs> I got you. Continuing to say yes to the relationship. Can I, I got you. That's good. That's good. Yes to the relationship. Yes to us being on one accord. Yes. To, I, I got it. I got it. Oh, that's good. Chardell, you help couples, marriage, family therapy. You do that on the regular. How you help friends and others. And um, Darius, you can think about this too. Maybe you should go first so Shardell don't steal your answer. <laughs> but what advice would you give to a friend, a client, whomever that would come and be like, I just feel like our relationship is stuck. We're not getting anywhere. Keep having the same issues. I don't know. I feel like I might be done. Nothing is changing. We're having the same arguments over and over. We're having the same issues over and over. I'm having the same disappointments over and over. What advice would you give to them? What advice would I give them? I would, I would nitpick. Pick out what's but what's what's wow. the reason why this is always happening? What are you doing? What are they doing? What they don't like? What they do like? Whatever the situation is, so they can try to figure out this is the reason why it's happening. This yeah. is the reason why this is the answer that I'm giving. Oh yeah, you you definitely you you a therapist now. Uh, I'm a very a therapist. Approach. You are a therapist now. <laughs> that is for sure. So, uh, <laughs> uh, at one of the places that I work at, I've had a couple of the, my coworkers be like, because I kind of left their, that place only worked there a couple of days now they were like i really miss your advice <laughs> it's like yeah, your wife is really rough off on you a lot <laughs> i talk about her all the time so they're like yeah um you're like our in-house therapist <laughs> yeah so that would definitely be the first step i'm i'm very solution focused right so my thing is what have you tried to change it because mm. a lot of times what we do is we ruminate a lot on all the things that are going wrong mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. giving up and being defeated and all these things. Because so people, why people shy away from coming and getting help is because they already feel defeated. They already feel like there's no way. They already feel like, and it's like, well, what have you tried? What have you, have you done anything outside of complain about it or outside of just talking to your circle of people who are just going to make you feel better and mm you know, sugarcoat yeah. you and rub your back. Like, have you actually gone to do something? And if they're talking to me, just saying you need help is a step in the right direction. 
just saying like, I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing is asking for help. And so to be able to identify like, okay, there is something we are stuck, but something is just that effort. If you are willing to put in the effort to figure out what it is, like he said, and how you can possibly fix it or solutions to it, then do it. And if you try everything and you know you've given 100% and you still feel like that's not enough to go forward, then who am I to tell you that that's not the decision that you should make? But I always say try. Intentionality is everything. Oh, wow. wow. I love that. Yeah, I'm both a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> and you've definitely given some nuggets for the TMC listeners and for the person that may find themselves listening to this that does feel stuck or feel like they're struggling. They now have a key, a tip. What I heard Darius say was to look deeper. Like why? Yeah. What's happening? Why is it happening? And just go down deeper till we get to what the root of it really is. And then you're saying, don't, you know, don't approach anything from a defeated mindset. But at the same time, you know, if you've tried to make changes, shifts, if you actually have put forth an effort, if you get to a certain point where that is the decision, then you know that that is what it is. And I think that's great. I think that's great. I mean, I have definitely enjoyed talking to you all tonight. I definitely believe that the TMC listeners that listen to this and everyone that hears it will definitely receive some help from you all. And I want to talk to you, Shardell, a little bit more about what you do. So tell the TMC listeners what you do and definitely tell them how they could connect and contact with you as what you do as a therapist. Sure. So because I'm only licensed as a therapist in California, the services that I do offer are coaching services instead of therapy. So um, I do have one-on-one coaching, a package, a coaching package, a three-month coaching package, um, because I'm big on getting it done. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm fast-paced. Um, And so, of course, people, there are people who need therapy, who really need that slow ground processing type of therapy. And of course, if somebody were to come to me and say that that's what they need, I would try my best to connect them to the resources that are appropriate for them. But if somebody has an issue or a road bump that they're like, I just really need to knock this out and I'm feeling stuck, like you mentioned, or I'm not really sure how to navigate it, then the three month coaching package is just there. It's simple. It's easy. Um, And kind of all of my brain and my nuggets as a therapist kind of gets incorporated into Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So I call it hybrid coaching um, because you can't not get the therapy in me as your coach. Um, And that's kind of how that goes. Then secondly, I have a a couples coaching program um, that I'm really excited about. And um, especially with that program, it starts off with this really thorough questionnaire Um, And what that does for me is it breaks through a lot of those conversations that people are not comfortable having. Mm -hmm. Um, And even to be honest, a lot of the questions that they ask in that questionnaire, you don't even really think about um, in the day to day kind of field. Mm -hmm. So to start off the coaching program with that questionnaire just lays everything out, which is why I tell people like you could be at the early stages of your relationship. Um, If you're like, hey, I want to start this program. I want to even see if I want to date you. Like if you're willing to invest that time and that money into that program, you know, that's already a jump start into your relationship, but it can go from there to a couple who is thinking about getting divorced. Like you mentioned, hey, let's break down these, you know, these deep topics, you know, relationships, faith, um, family, habits, all of those things, and just really be able to have a personalized program where we talk about, you know, your strong points because everybody's strong points are different. We talk about the weak points because everything is different. And then, like I said, that therapy hat can kind of shift in. And if it's necessary to talk about childhood, if it's necessary to talk about parents and generations and patterns and all of that stuff, I'm kind of fully equipped on all the levels of, you know, the educational level, the life experience. Then I have my, you know, relationship. And then he's kind of my activities guy too. So whenever I want to do activities or come up with stuff, I pick his brain because I'm not a man. (laughs) So (laughs) um, whenever I kind of need both perspectives, he's really hands-on with me for that. And so even though he's not really the face uh, when it comes to my coaching program, if I were to do some type of activity to drop in for them or something like that, 
his hand is all in it. And so that's kind of the two things that I kind of shuffle right now. Um, I'm very excited about the coaching program, though, for the couples, just because it's such a widespread opportunity. Nobody is left out. And if they need to get in touch with me, uh, Instagram is the easiest way um, to get in touch with me. I also have a website. So uh, Instagram is The Lighthouse Perspective. Um, that's also the website. So www.thelighthouseperspective. Um, but I'm pretty responsive on my Instagram. Um, if you're on Facebook, I'm also on there. Um, but I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, so um, I tell people all the time that I'm a resource. You don't have to buy into working with me to pick my brain. Um, so people can DM me. They can email me. Um, whatever is easier. I'm always available to talk. Um, and that's me. That is awesome. That's, that's awesome. Well, I'm suggesting that Darius's picture be added to the website because he's a therapist. He's all over that coach website. as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know, I know. He's all over that website. Yeah. He's all over my marketing. Um, yeah. Eventually, we want to do retreats. He'll be yes, yes. Do so it, I do it, have do all it. All of that in my brain. He's like my right hand man to all of that. That that is awesome. I love to hear that. I love to hear that. And it's also more advice for the TMC listeners to see you guys working together. So you you rubbed off on him, y'all. He's rubbed off on you because you talked about what he's done for you. And you guys are working together to make a difference for couples, for families, for friends. And that is awesome and amazing. We are so happy to have you all here tonight. And we will definitely have to have you on again when my husband sure. is able to be on with us. And we will have another amazing conversation. Darius, yes. I thoroughly enjoyed you. You, said you, you said you didn't have much to share, but you See, did. See, he you has do. so much to say. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure if your husband was here, he would have spoken He would be so talking much even more. more. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. So we will definitely do this again. And uh, we have definitely, I, I'm saying we always told you to say <laughs> we, we, I definitely enjoy having you all on and we will definitely do it again so that we can um, have another, yeah, sure. another, another friendly conversation with Mr. Francis. So <laughs> on behalf of the TMC listeners, we want to thank you all for joining us today. We want to thank you for everything that you shared and we appreciate you taking from your time to pour into us. No, thank you. So we hope that you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, go ahead and subscribe. Click the like button and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified each time we upload a video. And if you're listening on iTunes, rate the podcast and leave a review. That helps us get the word out. So we want to thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to hanging out with you again on next week as we continue to help you take your relationships from surviving to thriving. Bye. See you next week. Thank you.